So if you're like me, and I bet you are a little like me, when you joined the US military 10 years ago, you were thinking, damn, boy, I can live in all these different countries while I'm working here. That stuff sounds super awesome. Duck sauce, baby, sign me up. And as soon as you did that dusty tour over there in the Middle East, you were ready to sit your keys down into some of that refined European living over there in Europe and live that living La Vida loca life, baby. Go ahead, go ahead. We, we, hey, this, we getting a video. Go, go picture. He's so graceful on his feet. Why are you gay? But then it dawned on you that you never really realized or paid attention to why there are so many different American bases set in Germany. So now with roughly over 100,000 US military members and families currently living in Deutschland, you are in luck because today we are going to explain how and why there are so many US bases here in Germany on this episode of Sehr Deutsch, baby. So first off, let's spit some facts about the US military. Now, as it stands, the current US military is sitting at a staggering 1,400,000 active duty members and 845,000 reserves. Now that totals up to 2,245,000 total fighting force. Now, I know what you're thinking, but that's not the biggest military in the world. That spot is actually held by China. With the world's largest military, China holds more than 2.3 million active duty personnel and 1.2 million in reserve. But which militaries are the best? Well, there is a system in place created in 2006 called the Global Firepower Index, which measures a nation's potential war making capabilities across land, sea and air fought by conventional means. Now, this incorporates values such as manpower, equipment, natural resources, finances, and 50 other factors used in formulating its rankings. Now, personally, I'm a little sketchy on people voting their own countries as number one without personally understanding the data. It's kind of like if I was Chris in China and not Chris in Germany and be like, Chinese, China, China, China number one. China number one. Okay. But as it stands, the Global Firepower Index features China as a .0854 ranked as number three, Russia with .0791 at number two, and the USI at .0718 as number one. So this holds the question, with this big fighting force, why did America come to Germany in the first place? Well, to break it down in the layman's terms, America came to fight. Now, this was in a horrible war that we probably all have heard of today, and that was World War II. Now, at this time, most presidents and chancellors were signing like 7 million different agreements, pacts, and treaties, but for this story, we're only gonna go over three of them. Now, these include the Tripartite Pact, the Marshall Plan, and the Potsdam Agreement. Now, the Tripartite Pact was an agreement that was concluded by Germany, Italy, and Japan on September 27, 1940. This was one year after the start of World War II. Now, this was initiated to create a defense alliance between the countries and largely intended them to deter the United States from entering the war. This was basically a pact that said, if any one of these countries mess with you, they're gonna have to come through me first, man. That's right, I'm looking at you, America. What's good, Holmes? Now, this pack held up all good until December 8th, 1941, when Japan inflicted the sneak attack and devastating blow to Pearl Harbor. Now, this basically awakened the American beast within. Now, the Potsdam Agreement was an agreement that was formulated by the British, the US, and the Soviet Union. And basically, this took the legacy of Germany's Nazis past that led military limits being written into the country's constitution, where Germany was demilitarized after World War II ended in 1945, and the process of remilitarization has only developed over time. The Bundeswehr was actually formed in 1955 when West Germany joined NATO. But the constitution held that the role of Germany Germans armed forces would strictly be defensive. Now this also incorporates 
celebrates the convention of the presence of foreign forces in the Federal Republic of Germany of 1954. That's the, the real name. That's like the whole name of it. It's, it's crazy. Somebody's got to work on their naming conventions because that is a crazy name. Now this act allowed the eight partners of Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, and you guessed it, the United States of America, a long-term president of foreign forces to be stationed in Germany. Although not mentioned before, the Marshall Plan was actually another part of this story. Now, this was an American initiative to transfer over 12 billion in economic recovery to the Western European economies. Now, today that's estimated over $130 billion to help fuel the economy in Europe. The whole situation is critical in the extreme. Uh, but there's no doubt whatever in my mind that if we decide to do this thing, we can do it successfully. And there's also no doubt in my mind that the whole world hangs in the balance as to what it is to be in connection with what we are endeavoring to put forward here. And basically with Germany being in the center of the entire region of Europe, it was especially important that their economy become better for the rest of Europe to also become better. Now, 120 some billion, that's a, that's a corona stimulus package from the gods, boy, I tell you. And this formulated the new superpowers. Now, after the war, with the manpower and uses of so much of the military in the European zone, when everything was said and done, decolonization set in for most colonized countries. This introduced the United States and the Soviet Union to become the two biggest superpowers of the world. While America was initially the biggest army after the World War spreading its new plan for democracy, the Soviet Union started expanding its military efforts, occupying all of Eastern Germany, becoming an empire and siphoning much of the USSR wealth back into the Soviet Union's military power to include nuclear capabilities. Now, this became a problem for these two superpowers. On one hand, America is increasingly marketing the nation of democracy and the Soviet Union is slanging the promise of communism. And these two countries were having a beef that any person that has ever witnessed within the range of two extreme alpha males got at it. <laughs> And right in between these two zones was an area that was called the Iron Curtain. And to name these chilly conflicts between these superpowers, the divide was known as the Cold War. Now, this war lasted for decades, which basically simulated the tension between democracy and communism. Freedom and whatever the hell communism was selling hard work or something. I don't know what they were doing and to circle back around to answer the question Why are there so many US bases in Germany? America at that time knew that this period of the Cold War with the demilitarization of Germany and the increasing tension between the US and the Soviet Union if anything were to happen they would need to deploy troops quickly or have a rapid deployment group ready to go. And with their newfound allies in Germany, they had a place where they could be. I mean, realistically, if I were Russia and America was popping a bunch of ish across the pond, I'd be like, hey, you dog, whatever you talking about, soon as you tip, we taking over. That was, that's a horrible Russian accent. Now this caused the area of West Germany to flourish in industry, having decades of development advances over what was East Germany until the reunification of 1990. Funny enough, one of the only reasons that Russia and America never really attacked each other was because of a term called MAD, or Mutually Deterred Destruction. Basically, it's the thought process of two countries thinking, well, you know, I could blow your whole ish up right now. Like, what's good? What you wanna do? Like, I'm ready to push the button if you are. And because of this, in those early times, there were around 40 different US bases stationed in Germany at one time. Basically, they were there for the sole purpose of being a forward operating base against the USSR in the Cold War. Now, currently, the Convention on the Presence of Foreign Forces in the Federal Republic of Germany of 1954, <sighs> this act has become an open-ended convention and remains effective following the conclusion of the two plus four treaty which is basically like an amendment that was created after the final sentiment in German reunification that states that Germany can now terminate this agreement by giving a two years notice. Basically it's saying like, look, like we'll let you come here 
as long as we feel like it. But when we're ready for you to go, we'll just give you a two year notice. Now that is all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what do you think about the US bases still occupying themselves in Germany. I'm not gonna lie, it worked out for me because that's why I'm here. I probably wouldn't be here any other way. Think, do you think that they still need to be here? Would it be possible for Germany to have bases in America? I don't know how that goes, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's all I got for you guys today, it's your boy Chris. Germany, soldier of life, see you in the next one. Peace.